Let's read the next thing that it asks us. It says, question, <clears throat> here's calculus. The vehicle needs to complete this journey within 12 hours. Now, just like I did before, but before you guys came in the room, there's a essential piece of information, so maybe not jot that down, right? 12 hours. Whilst remaining under the speed limit, so I'm gonna put uh, less than 12 hours, whilst remaining under the speed limit of 90 kilometers per hour. So I'm gonna say less than 90 kilometers per hour. So what this is giving us, by the way, does anyone know there's a, there's a name for this, these two pieces of information? It starts with a B, anyone know what it's called? If you don't know, you don't even need to know what it's called, but it's actually good language for you guys to have. These are called boundaries, right? So what we've got is we don't have a car that can go infinite kilometers per hour, right? And we also don't have an infinite amount of time. Like you can't just go at one kilometer per hour and take forever, okay? So these set out upper and lower boundaries for what values we can put into this speed, okay? At what speed V should the vehicle be driven to minimize the cost C whilst arriving at the destination. Now, remember you guys told me right at the start, right? The faster you drive, the more you're gonna have to spend on petrol, right? But you can't drive too slow because then you will arrive too late. Does that make sense? Now, as soon as we know, I'm trying to minimize, what's the thing that I'm gonna do to that cost function over there? I'm gonna differentiate, right? So, let's do this. Um, usually, you guys are used to seeing dy on dx, but there are no y's and no x's to be found. So in fact, I'm gonna be differentiating d what? dc, that's the function on the left. And I'm not differentiating with respect to x, I'm differentiating with respect to v, that's my variable, okay? Now, I'm so confident we can do this part. I will just sneakily take this and write it as a v to the negative one. Why do you think that's helpful? Yeah, I can just use the power law when I'm differentiating it, right? So let's just differentiate it. 10V, differentiate it gives you 10, well done. <laughs> and then 93,000 V to the negative one, what happens to the negative? It's put to the one. Yep, so I'll go minus 93,000. And then what happens to that negative one that's up in the index now? Minus two. Reduce it, so I'll go V to the negative two, okay? So I've got 10 take away 93,000 on V squared. Are you okay with that as the derivative? DC on DV. Now, I think I should be, oh, went to a room with no eraser. Okay, I'm gonna get you guys, while I go find a whiteboard um, eraser, to, once you've got this derivative here, what do you do with that to find a minimum? That's what you're looking for? Okay, so we want, we want to substitute zero, but just be careful. What am I substituting zero for? Like, can I put zero in here? No, you can't, right? You want the, this derivative to actually equal zero, right? Because what we're hoping is, we might guess that the function looks something like this, right? And where we find the derivative is zero is this stationary point down the bottom, right? Now, by the way, I don't actually know that, to be sure. The function could look like this, for all I know. If, you, if the function looked like this and you found where dc on dv equals zero, what does that tell you? Does that tell you the minimum cost? It actually tells you the the maximum cost, which is a bad thing, right? So we're gonna have to not only find where it's equal to zero, we're gonna need to show that it's a minimum, not a maximum. That's actually really important um, because sometimes the minimum isn't at, like suppose this really was it, right? We find a stationary point, that's not it. What are we gonna use instead? It's that word to start started with B before, right? It's, the, it's one of the boundaries is gonna tell us, right? It's either the slowest we can possibly go or the fastest we can possibly go, one of those will be the actual minimum, okay? So, let me pause right there, I'm gonna get a, an eraser and that'll give you some time to get a derivative. Okay, this is what I've got so far. Can someone tell me if I'm going on the right track or if I'm going crazy? Yeah? Is my arithmetic okay? So all I did was I set this, which you guys told me was the derivative, I set it to be equal to zero because that's where stationary points are. Um, I then said, well, I'll add this to both sides, right? So that's what's put them on opposite sides, divided by 10, and then I multiply both sides by v squared. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. So this is what I've got. Yes, agreement, no? I mean, that doesn't look like a square number to me, unless <laughs> it's one I'm not familiar with. 
you do have to be careful though, right? When you go from here to here, there are two solutions to this quadratic equation, but we only want the positive one. Can someone tell me why? Oh, you can't go backwards. Presumably, we want to actually arrive at our, at our destination, not, um, not go away from it. Okay, so this is what I've got. Okay, I've got a stationary point, but what did we say before? Like, is this just the answer? What is, by the way, what, can someone give me that as a decimal? What is the square root of 9, 300? It's like 96.44. 96.4 kilometers per hour. Okay, now have a look at this, right? Is this okay? Is this susceptible? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've already hit a problem, haven't I? You're over the limit. I'm over the speed limit, right? Now this is exactly what I was talking about before, right? I said one of the issues with um, finding a stationary point is you don't know what kind of stationary point it is, right? You don't know if it's a good one, a minimum in this case, or a bad one, right? But now what I've found is where my stationary point is not even within my boundaries. Do you see that? So I'm like, oh, this will apparently minimize the cost, maybe. We should differentiate again, let's just do that to be sure, but I can't even go at that speed, right? Does that make sense? Let's just make sure we do um, know that we're, we're doing this right. If I went and differentiated again, which would give me this, okay? So what happens to that 10 when you differentiate another time? It just disappears. Then you get negative two multiplied by negative 93,000. Is that okay? Which last I checked will give you one, eight, six thousand? Is that okay? V to the, what happens to the power? Negative three, okay, very good. So, just have a look at this. You don't even need to do any kind of calculation, so you don't need a calculator, right? If you take a value of V, like this, it's positive, right? So you put it in here. Can you tell me, because I only care if this thing is positive or negative, it's a second derivative, so I'm trying to work out, am I concave up or concave down? Which one is it? I don't even know, need to know its value. It's a positive number divided by some other positive number. Will that result be positive or negative? Positive. It'll be positive. Positive divided by positive will always be positive. So you're like, oh, that's good. I do have a minimum, right? So that is, um, you know, when you substitute in, but it's a minimum that's actually outside of our allowable domain, right? Do you remember the word domain, like where you're allowed to put in x values? In this case, it's v values, right? So therefore, since this is too fast, what's the closest we can get to it? The closest v to the actual minimum is 90 kilometers per hour, right? Um, because you can't go any faster than that. Which is a bit funny, isn't it? We've gone through all this work to find, using calculus, what the stationary point is, but we've found is it's illegal. Sorry about that, right? Um, but that's your answer, right? And you can test it, by the way. You can just check to see if you're like, I'm not convinced this is the right answer. See this um, V value, we can put it into our original cost equation. Do you remember that? Cost was equal to, oh, help me remember, 10V plus 93,000 on V, is that right? So you could put 90 into here. Actually, in fact, can you, can you put 90 into that? Tell me what you get. And then you can also put something else, like say 89. That is also another legal speed. Right? And see, do I get something better or do I get it worse? When you put in 90, what do you get? What's your actual cost? It'll be a decimal, I assume. Someone got it? Oh, 1933.3. Cool. Dot, 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 dot. So just under 2000. When you put in 89, you notice what happens, right? This number gets bigger, but this number gets smaller. So that's why we use calculus. But what do you actually get? What's the cost? One, one? Are you sure? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> 1934. 1934, was it? 0.94. Okay, so, 94, there you go. So you can see it's a dollar more. Of course, it's not a big difference because it's only one kilometer per hour difference. But can you see how what we've done is, we used our, our model, we applied calculus to it, 
And then, well, the calculus actually told us based on our conditions that the optimal thing is actually too fast. So therefore we've got to go to the speed limit. That's why the boundaries are so important. Make sense? Um, I will just say one last thing before I send you guys off. There's probably a few lines of working that I've not written here because I've just explained it to you. Um, but all the logic is probably the important part to capture. Right, so I hope you guys found that helpful.